flip-flop. Watered-down policies, nearly indistinguishable from Trudeau's liberals. He is not trustworthy. Those are the words, the harsh words, from conservative Senator Denise Batters, aimed at her party's leader, Erin O'Toole. She wants him gone. And so the open revolt in the conservative party begins again. Senator Batters is launching a petition to review Erin O'Toole's leadership. In a Twitter video, the senator says Mr. O'Toole's flip-flops on the carbon tax, firearms, and conscience rights without party input are some of the reasons for her petition. She also cites Mr. O'Toole's failure to win diverse urban and suburban seats, as well as the failure to connect with female voters for the conservatives' failure to win the election. So, will the senator's petition initiate the end of Erin O'Toole's leadership? How much support does she already have? Well... Party members are already hitting back at her, so what will she say to them? Let's find out. Joining me now, Conservative Senator Denise Batters. Senator, great to have you on the program. Thanks for doing this. Why Thank did you very you, much for having me. Why did you write this petition to have a leadership review for Aaron O'Toole? Why I did it is that uh, Mr. O'Toole has... Um, reversed positions repeatedly on a number of core conservative policies since he's become leader and especially during the federal election. And I thought it was critical that our party members had a say both on Mr. O'Toole's continued leadership, but also more importantly, probably on the future direction of our party. Mr. O'Toole said election night that he wanted our members to have the courage to change. So there could be more change coming. And I thought that it was necessary that our members have a say. And I'm, I'm concerned. I came from the PC side of the party before the merger happened, and I'm concerned that uh, the party could split again if our members feel like they're being left out of the process, that leadership is disconnected from the membership. Really, all I'm asking is that members have a voice in this particular process and perhaps have this sped up so that the normal course of events happen, that a leadership review vote take place within about six months instead of the two years that it would actually take place after the election loss happened. But when I read your, your, your petition, flip-flop, watered-down policies, uh, indistinguishable from the Trudeau Liberals, not trustworthy, these are pretty harsh words. I assume you don't think he should be the leader, is that fair? Well, that may be how my vote goes, but it's really the members that have the most important say of this. I am one member, but there are hundreds of thousands of members across the country, potentially, um, who want to have that say. And I, yes, I voiced my opinion. And frankly, it's not only my own opinion, but what I heard at the doors in the election. I door knocked all three Regina ridings during this past election, and I heard the same sorts of thing from, you know, some of my caucus members and also candidates in the election from all parts of the country who said that they heard the same things, that Canadian voters felt like in this particular election, they couldn't trust Aaron O'Toole because of the flip-flops that he had made on core conservative policies. And really, power... Um, Power without principles is meaningless. Power without principles is what we have right now with the current Trudeau government, and I don't think any conservative wants that. You're, you, better, you know this world well, Senator. You don't do this alone. Let's be candid. You, you said you've heard it at the doors. You've heard it from caucus. How much support? This, is, this sounds to all of us, and I've been poking around, like a coordinated campaign. He can't punish you because you're a senator, so you don't depend on him. But do you have the support of, of members of caucus, MPs? Do you have other support in a coordinated campaign? There is. There are many members who are supportive, um, and I will leave it to them to voice public support um, if and when they feel like they're able to do that. Um, I guess maybe one of the reasons that I'm coming forward publicly is that uh, I don't have the same repercussions um, that some of my MP right. colleagues do, and they fear those repercussions, right? So it's a, it's a very important thing. But really what we're asking for here is simply to have the right. members have a say. And okay, oh, but, but let's talk MPs. about that. They, they fear, you're saying that there's MPs that will support this, but they they're too fearful to sign because, you know, you've seen people who have voiced opinions. They're not in the shadow cabinet. You've seen what happened to another uh, conservative who's raised issues with another uh, petition, not a member of, of cabinet or of caucus, obviously. But you're saying there's MPs who, are, who have told you we're afraid of reprisal, but we do support a leadership review and we don't want Aaron O'Toole as the leader. Yes. How many? Yes. Well, we will see what, I will leave that for my colleagues to come forward, but what I know is that there are already 
just today alone, and we've just been at it a few hours actually as we tape this interview today, already more than a thousand people have signed that petition that we just put up a few hours ago. Right. And uh, of course, you, we have indicated on there that you need to be a member of the party to sign. And uh, if you aren't a member yet, then you can sign up and do it later once you've been a member for some time. So that's what's happening. And we have uh, already seen people who are, um, you know, MP, previous former MPs, EDA presidents. I've been hearing from caucus colleagues of mine who are um, discussing with their boards um, the possibility of coming out publicly um, in support of this because they want to have that say. It, the Conservative Party has been around for uh, more than 150 years. We want to make sure that this party does not split apart again. But um, you look like you're splitting it. I, I know, but a lot of people are saying, you, you keep saying you don't want it split, and they say, she says that, but she's the one splitting it. You saw Michelle Rempel Garner, senior member of the Shadow Cabinet. She's put out a Facebook video and uh, a series of tweets about you. She says what you're doing is irresponsible. You should have uh, done this uh, on Wednesday in caucus. And she, in her video, she's frustrated. She says it's a distraction. The liberals are rejoicing. And she's asking you to withdraw your petition. What's your response to her? Well, of course, I value Michelle Rempel as a colleague. And I think she does a great job in standing up for her constituents. I'm trying to stand up uh, for people that I've heard this from consistently for the last number of weeks. They want their voices heard. Uh, members of the party, board members are, you know, quitting their positions. Major donors to the party are saying that they don't want to donate anymore because they don't know what the Conservative Party stands for any, any longer. So I think it's best to actually just have this put to rest. Let's have this leadership review confidence vote. Um, if Mr. O'Toole has the support of members, great. Then, uh, you know, that side is successful. I think the sooner we have it, the better. But it's the going to happen party, one the, way or the other. The party says it's 2023. They say you got to wait till 2023. Those are the rules. You're out of order, according to some of the party members. What you're doing is out of order. And the party's going to wait till 2023. If he tries to force it to 2023, what do you do then? Well, I actually just very briefly, uh, before I went on this particular um, interview, I did see that response just very briefly on Twitter. So it's not a considered response yet, but I disagree with Mr. Batherson on that. We're not asking for the leadership selection process to commence. We're simply asking for a referendum of the members as is allowed we're confident under the Constitution, under that particular provision. There's no particular part that limits what uh, members are allowed to ask for a referendum of. That's what I'm requesting as a member of the Conservative Party of Canada, a referendum just asking right. for the members to have, um, to have the confidence vote for the leader expedited. That's all. It's going to happen right. in 2023. We simply want it to happen in the normal course as it happened with Mr. Harper within about seven months. Um, with Mr. Shear, it would have happened within about mm. six months. And frankly, um, also, anything that I said about Mr. O'Toole in the video, I said to him directly already. Hmm. So last question real quick. If he stays on as leader, do you think Conservatives can win an election under Aaron O'Toole? My personal opinion, as I stated in the video, is I think that Canadian voters have made that judgment about him, but that's my opinion. Members will have the say, and it's their voices that need to be heard on this. They need to have a say about the leadership, but also, as I say, right. the most important thing is the future direction of the party. Do we want to continue to, and I'm not averse to centrist policies at all. I came from the PC side of the party, but those policies have to be presented with integrity and consistency and the support of members, hmm. and that did not happen under Mr. O'Toole's leadership. Okay. Uh well, we'll see where this is going. Uh, Conservative Senator Denise Batters. Senator, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Evan. Appreciate you having me on today.